Well, good morning. We're going to start some church. I don't know what you came to do, but we came to praise the Lord, huh? And celebrate some life today. I heard an old, old story. How a Savior came from glory. How he gave his life on Calvary to save. with me. There's victory in Jesus, church. Victory in Jesus, my Savior. for us, church. Thank you, Lord. His redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him. And all my love is through me. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing Third verse. I heard about a mansion he's built for me. Sing that chorus one more time. Victory in Jesus. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming love. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good to see everybody this morning. This is a wonderful morning. We got a lot going on. First of all, we're in the house of the Lord. We get to praise His name and and learn all about His Word. Not only that, but we're going to celebrate two amazing people in their 50th anniversary today. So it's good to see everybody here in support of that. Right off the bat, I hope you notice we got a bass on the bass. He's setting in for us this week. That's right. And it wouldn't be the same without a a bassism, if you will. 
He said this week somebody tried to approach him and sell him a cough, and he looked him right in the eye and said, you know, that's the last thing I need. <laughs> Sorry. His delivery is usually much better. Right off the bat, we're going to take care of a little housekeeping. We've got some announcements, and i got a whole page of them. Sister Jamie's not here, and she left me to my vices. So hang on tight. If you've got a pencil, you might want to pull it out. We've got some dates coming up I'm going to introduce. But first, before we do any of that, if you're a first-time visitor here this morning, raise your hand. We want to make you feel welcome. Right on. We've got a young man right here, Sister Roxy's grandson. That's awesome stuff. We'll probably see more as the service goes on and we get closer to the celebration. Um, Pray for America meets at 10 a.m. on Mondays. Don't forget there's a box back there, and I've been failing to tell you this, for prayer requests. They get in here, and they, they get fired up for the Lord and praying. So if you've got something on your heart and you want it prayed for, again, there's a box back there for Miss Christine. We also have Bible studies every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Uh, with Dolores and uh, Sister Deborah uh, over in the Fellowship Hall. Don't forget Pastor Roger, 4 p.m. right here in the sanctuary on Mondays. And then Wednesday nights with me, it starts at 7.15 after our singing practice. And we're in the book of James. We're learning about practical Christian living. We're going to be talking about teachers, teaching, and tongues this Wednesday. So if you can be there, 7.15. Um, we got VBS snack sign-up sheet back there. I brought that out to you last week, the color for page back there. We're looking for those that want to support us uh, for Vacation Bible School with the, with the purchasing of snacks. Again, if you take one of those colorful tabs and tear it off, Right behind it will be a line you sign your name on. That way it gives Sister Jamie and I and those that are helping with this uh, an idea of who's bringing in what. And we don't double up on, on stuff. Uh, don't forget to go through this, the, the lost and found. We've got a lot of stuff back there on the table if you're leaving stuff in the pews here. Or over in Helping Hands, we've had a lot of uh, redundancy stuff. Some of you have left behind for Finger Food Fellowship. We'll keep it. We're not going to do anything with it. But We'd like to get it back to its rightful owner. And don't forget, we have a few more baptism certificates uh, for your keepsakes. Uh, don't forget, we just spoke of Vacation Bible School. If you volunteered, I know I'm speaking kind of fast. If you volunteered for Vacation Bible School, please make sure you're double-checking and triple-checking those calendars. Uh, we look forward to all of our volunteers that signed up. Um, and I can tell you the phone's been ringing. Pastor Arlen received a call. I've received two calls. Four, fa four kids in one family, two in another family. So they're calling. They're inquiring, and we're going we're gonna to show up. So I'm excited to see what, that, what happens with Vacation Bible School. And it's never too late to sign up, by the way. If you feel like you've got the time now in your schedule and you'd like to be part of that Vacation Bible School ministry, the more the merrier. And you'll get just as much of a blessing out of it, I can assure you that. Ladies Fellowship this Thursday, uh, the 16th, rather, at 630 in the Fellowship Hall. All right, now I'm, I'm coming up to the tough stuff that's, that's a little bit tougher to talk about. We need volunteers. Uh, June 18th, I'm going to try a little cleanup over by the office area and where those containers are in our storage building. We'd like to leverage some of that space in the future uh, for church picnics, uh, gatherings, uh, maybe in our yard sale in the shade so not everybody's going home with a nice sunburn at the end of the day. Makes it easier for everybody to volunteer when it's comfortable, right? So uh, we're going to have that on the 18th. That, that's, that's next Saturday. There's no sign-up sheet. We're going to start 8 a.m. in the morning. If you can be here early, we'll beat the heat. Um, it's only two hours or less is what I'm anticipating. It's not going to be a lot. We're just going to pick up limbs and things that have fallen. Please up the area, you know. Sign-up sheet for the back for the 26th chicken and dumpling and ham luncheon right after church. We've had a, a wonderful contribution made to us. And... Uh, we're going to be making chicken and dumplings, or Sister Pat is, uh, along with ham if you're not a chicken fan. That meal will happen right after the church. It's absolutely free for everybody. Just make sure you sign up. You can bring a dish if you like to help out. And uh, if, you want, if you don't want to bring a dish, you can donate. All the money that we've used over in the fellowship hall, just so you know, doesn't come from the church's general fund. It all came from the yard sale and the improvements that we're uh, making over there from uh, wonderful contributions from you and others that have purchased stuff in the yard sale. So um, the seventh, speaking of yard sale, we've done the chicken dumpling sign up. We're getting packed over here. Um, Mama's been over there looking through everything and getting it organized. And I'm going to wrap up the announcements here. The 7th, 8th, and 9th of July, we're having another yard sale. And I need volunteers for all three days, help us get set up, and then out there in it when we're actually doing the sales. So if you, if you want to be part of that and you'd like to help us again, we'll have sign-up sheets. I already have got them back there. So sign up and get into those works of service. And as a matter of fact, starting right now, 
we begin accepting more donations even for that yard sale. A lot of stuff has already come in, but the word go, if you will. We're going to get on with church this morning. I was, um, again, given a song in our offering box back there and started singing. A lot of you are familiar with it, Past, or Pastor Bill. Brother Bill was uh, explaining to me that it's a, an invitation song. He used to sing in the Baptist churches, often used for communion. But I went ahead and looked up a little bit. This song, this hymn was written back in the Victorian ages of like 1830 from a young lady that was a, uh, a comedic poet, if you will. And uh, she was stricken at the age of 32 with something that left her shut in and sick and could no longer uh, be in the real world, if you will. It became completely despondent, broken down, you know, a very, very low spot in her lifetime. And she received a message from a mentor, come just as you are to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. There's rest in him. That's what this song's about, just as I am. If you're here this morning and you're dealing with something, come to him just as you are and call on his name. Hope it blesses you. Starlin's going to come up here and sing this one. I told him this morning this song had double meaning, and you'll figure out. He's got the blessing of God Almighty and life eternal and the blessing of a beautiful wife of 50 years. (laughs) 
Amen. We'll see how this is going to go. I hurt my back. I'm on Flexoril. Uh, I think I'm awake. I'm not really sure. <laughs> You'll find out before this service is over, but uh, I was able to get up this morning. I was thankful for that. Amen. Amen. Penny prayed for me. She laid hands on me. She's been praying for me, and I appreciate that, honey. I really, really do. But like I said, I'm a little foggy and droggy, but uh, this song does have a double meaning. I'm still holding on. You know, years ago, when Penny and I were married, a lot of people didn't give it uh, six months. You, you've heard that before, haven't you? Yeah, well, that won't ever last. Matter of fact, when I asked Penny to marry me, and she said yes, she went and told my mother. She says, uh, Miss Beck Arlen asked me to marry him. She said, well, what did you say? She said, I said yes. She said, you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you might say, well, Pastor, how do you know that? I was there. <laughs> Amen. So I asked her the other day if she felt stupid. She said, not at all. After 50 years. Amen. Amen. Even though my mom tried to talk her out of it. <laughs> but when we got saved, it was the same thing. Yeah, well, we know how that goes. That'll last a couple months. We brought back in the honky tonks and all that. But 40 something years later, Amen. still serving God. Thank Amen. So I hope you can understand these words. People said I'd never make it. I'd never see it through They don't know what keeps me going I guess they never have met you No, my life was in shambles Till the day you came along Tears into laughter. You gave me a brand new song. And I'm still holding on. Lord, I've never let you go. You gave me a smile. You touched my heart. You touched my soul. And the bridges that's behind me, Lord, I burn them to the ground. I'm still holding on. You're the best thing I've ever found. Oh, oh, likely not to prosper. Left hanging over my head. That boy will never count for nothing That's what most people say And I've been known to be unsettled I've never stayed around too long You're the treasure I was searching for Lord, I'm still holding on I'm still holding on. How about you? Lord, I've never let you. He won't let go of you either. You gave me a smile. You touched my heart. You touched my soul. And the bridges that's behind me. Lord, I burn it to the ground. I'm still holding on. You're the best thing I've ever found. Sing it with me now. I'm still holding on. Lord, I'll never let you go. And you gave me a smile. You touched my heart. You touched my soul. And the bridges that's behind me, Lord, I burned them to the ground. I'm still holding on. You're the best thing I've ever found. 
and the bridges that's behind me. Lord, I burn into the ground. And I'm still holding on. You're the best thing I've ever found. I'm still holding on. You're the best thing name is Jesus, the best thing I've ever found. But as Rick said, we're still holding on. And I'm still holding on to Penny. And she leads me around like a puppy. <laughs> Amen. Just teasing. God bless you. Attention back to Pastor Rick again. <clears throat> awesome song. Great words. Great message. We're going to praise and worship the Lord. Before I had one more thing I needed to say before we continued on with the service we're going to do things a little bit differently the, the fellowship hall is definitely being occupied at the moment so any of the kids that are going into that particular classroom they'll be staying in the sanctuary today with the rest of us and i'm sure they'll be just as blessed oh they're going to the teen room thank you miss dolores perfect perfect see it's good to have women around in our lives <laughs> always always I'm greater because of mine for certain. We're going to praise and worship the Lord. If you can stand and do it with us, we invite you to do so. We're going to spend some time praising and worshiping the man that means the most. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty let all the world rejoice, all the world rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great. Is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Let's do that first verse again. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the world rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. Come on. How great is our God, sing with me, is our God, and all will see how great, how great. Is our, let's stay right there on that course. How great is our God? How great, how great is our God? Sing with me. Is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Go on to the second verse. Thank you, Jesus. And age to age. Time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead free in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Hallelujah. Is our Sing it again. God. How great is our God. Thank you, Jesus. How great, How great is our God. Sing with me. Is 
is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Name above all names. Name above all names. Worthy of all praise. My heart will see how great is our God. Sing that part again. Name above all names. Name above all names. He's worthy of all my heart will sing how great is our God. Back to the chorus one last time. How great is our God. How great, how great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great. How great is our God. One last time. How great is our God. Thank you, Jesus. How great, how great is our God. Sing with me. Is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. And all will see how great is our God. I thirst for you. I long to be in your presence. My soul will wait on you. Father, draw me nearer. Draw me nearer to the beauty of your I thirst for you. I long to be in your presence. My soul will wait on me. Father, draw me nearer. Draw me nearer to the beauty of your holiness. Come on, sing it with me. I will wait. Almighty God, in the beauty of your holiness, I will worship you, Almighty God, in the beauty of your holiness. Back to the top. Lord, I thirst for you. I long to be in your presence. My soul will wait on me. Father, draw me nearer, draw me nearer to the beauty of your holiness. I will wait for you, Almighty God, in the beauty of your holiness. I will work. Almighty God, in the beauty of your home. Let's stay right there. I will wait. I will wait for you, Almighty God, in the beauty of your holiness. I will worship you, Almighty God, in the beauty. I want to sing it one more time all the way through. Your presence, my soul will wait on you. Father, draw me nearer, draw me nearer to the beauty of your home. Yeah, last time, sing it out. I will wait for you, Almighty God, in 
the beauty of your holiness. I will worship you, Almighty God, in the beauty of your holiness. In the beauty of your The beauty of the morning. In moments like these, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to you. Singing, I love you, Lord. I love you.
Lord, I've come to give you honor. Lord, I've come to give you praise. Lord, I've come to give all glory to your name. Lord, I've come to give you honor. Lord, I've come to give you praise. Lord, I've come to give all glory to your name. You alone are worthy of our honor. You alone are worthy of our praise. You alone are worthy of all glory. You alone we worship. You alone we worship, Lord. You alone we worship. Lord, I've come to give you honor. Lord, I've come to give you praise. Lord, I've come to give all glory to your name. Lord, I've come to give you honor. Lord, I've come to give you praise. Lord, I've come to give all glory to your name. He alone is worthy, church. You alone are worthy of our honor. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy of all glory. You alone we worship. You alone we worship, Lord. You alone we worship. In this, in this day right there. You alone we worship. You alone we worship, Lord. You alone we worship. Heavenly Father, you are the one that we worship. You alone, Father God, still seated on the throne, still in control. Father God, we've come to you this morning just unworthy of any of the salvation you've given us. Let us always put that foremost in our mind, Father God. If we have nothing more to thank you for in the world, it's that we have eternity with you. If we persevere to the end, we thank you for all that you do for us. Bless and anoint this special day, Father God. Bless and anoint the entire part of this service, Father God. We give you the glory for it all. You say it all in your precious Son, Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you. Love you too. Rich taking your place. Rich. Nope. She's staying here, right? Yep. <laughs> Amen. Penny had children's church today, but Pastor Rick volunteered to take her place. So I appreciate that, Rick. Amen. A couple of weeks ago, I moved two couches with beds in them. What do you call those? Sleeper couch. Hide the beds. By myself, no problem. No problem. Didn't injure anything. And the day before yesterday, I'm working on a hot water heater. The heaviest thing I lifted was a wrench. 
But I guess it was in this position I was in, hunkered down. Is that a word, hunkered? In, in a bad position for quite some time, and I guess that extended period, I began feeling it in my back and thinking, oh, no, it's okay. Got to get it done. Got to get it done. Because if I don't get hot water, I'll be in hot water. You know what I mean? So anyhow, I knew when I finished that there was a problem. And uh, I did ask Jesus to help me, but I also hit the flex reel. I'm not going to lie. So I'm a little bit droggy today, a little sleepy. So pray for me. We'll see what happens, okay? Praise the Lord. We're going to be in the book of Matthew, chapter 19, for a text this morning, beginning in verse 1. And it came to pass. Aren't you glad that things come to pass? Well, some things you couldn't handle, could you? This too shall pass. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings. Now, Jesus is preaching in Galilee. It's his Galilean ministry. He's been there quite some time. Matter of fact, if you study the book of Matthew, you'll find out in chapter 4 that Jesus left Judea and went to Galilee. And that's where he began his public ministry. John the Baptist was thrown in prison. Jesus begins his ministry in Galilee. And, and he preaches and does miracles and all kinds of things down in Galilee. He preaches the Sermon on the Mount, the greatest sermon that's ever been preached by anyone but there was a time to end that particular ministry. He had to go back to Judea because he had some other things he would need to do. And one thing that he would need to do in Judea was to die outside of Jerusalem on a hill called Golgotha, the place of the skull, where he would hang on a cross for you and our sins. Amen? It was time. Jesus knew it was getting near. He had to go back to Jerusalem, though his disciples argued many times, it's dangerous back there. They, they want to kill you, Jesus. He knew that, but he also knew that he came to die. That's why he came here, to give his life. And he finished, he said, he departed from Galilee and came into the coast of Judea, beyond Jordan, is where John was baptizing. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Remember the Pharisees last week? I don't know if you remember if you were here, but Jesus has some very harsh words to say to the Pharisees. They were a religious group. They were also mixed into politics. They were hypocrites. And Jesus called them to their face. I mean, he didn't wait till they left. He said a bunch of hypocrites to their face, looked them right in the eye and said, Ye hypocrites, you vipers, you wicked, evil men. Jesus had a backbone. Jesus was not afraid. I know we have this picture in the West that Jesus was this little limp-wristed man, but he was not. He stood up for what was right, and he called out what was wrong. And by doing that, he made some people very mad. Matter of fact, I don't know if I mentioned it last week, Peter kind of said, Jesus, do you know you offended them guys? <laughs> you ever been in a situation where someone starts doing something, and you're like, oh, gosh, this is getting a little uncomfortable here. Feeling a little bit funny here. Peter and him, now this is Peter, the big mouth, and afraid to say anything. But Jesus, do you, do you realize you, you offended them? Leave them alone. They're blind guides of the blind. They're both going to fall in the ditch. He's just calling them out, and we went through that last week. So we're not going to go through that this week. But this is what's happening. These are the things that are happening that brings Jesus to that place where he would call them out and expose to the people. Because, see, a lot of people held them in high regard. These are the men of God, these Pharisees. Look at them, well-dressed. They've got all their robes on. They're down at the marketplace praying. They watch them put their, their tithe in. I mean, even the little things. Oh, they're so holy. People were looking to them as if they were religious. Jesus said, these are not religious men. These are hypocrites. They're just acting like that. So then, that's part of the reason. Verse 3, the Pharisees also came tempting him. See, Jesus knew what they were doing. They were tempted. They weren't serious about what they were asking him. They were trying to trick him. They were tempting him to say something wrong so they could take it to the authorities and hang Jesus, have him put to death. If you read chapter 22, we're not going to go there at this point. 
And there was another time when it said the Pharisees got with the Herodians. Now, the Herodians probably are who you think they are. They were followers of Herod, King Herod. He was the king. He really wasn't a king. He was a puppet king for the Roman government. Most people in Israel understood that, but there were his followers called the Herodians. They were political leaders in those days, and the Pharisees and the Herodians hated each other. They couldn't stand each other's guts, but they got together to plot against Jesus. They didn't care what it took. We'll even deal with the, the, the Herodians if we have to, to trip this man up. And you remember the story. They brought him a coin. Is it lawful to pay tribute to Caesar? Hoping he would get him, trap him. Say, Hi. He said that we shouldn't pay tithes and then get Caesar mad at him and get Jesus, everybody mad and kill him. He said, look, let me see that thing. Well, whose who's superscription's on here? Caesar. Well, you render under Caesar the things that are Caesar's and render under God the things that are God's. That simple. And they marveled. They thought they were going to trap him in his words. And let me tell you, people today are trying to trap you in your words. You say the wrong word, you're a racist. You say the other wrong, you're homophobic or xenophobic. I mean, you can't even speak. They were trying to muzzle Jesus. They were trying to trick him in his words. And the very same thing is happening today. Be aware. Be on your guard. Amen? Amen. Let's go on. <laughs> they ask, is it lawful to put away a man's wife for every cause? You got you to think about this. Well, she burnt my toast last night. I think I should divorce her. <laughs> Penny has offered up a few burnt sacrifices to me, offerings, I should say, in her time and in our time together. But it was, it was ridiculous. Any little thing, they would get rid of their wife and put them away, and they, they were to stay celibate for the rest of their lives. Jesus would go on to say, it was because of the hardness of your heart that Moses even gave a right of divorcement. Just like you're, you're uh, showing right now your heart. Least little thing, get a divorce. And he answered and said unto them, have you not read? Now, these are the Pharisees. These are men supposed to know the Word of God. Have you not read? That which was made then at the beginning was made male and female. Now, a lot of people need to read the Bible today. They aren't reading it. God made a male and female. Amen. It's not that hard. It's a simple, basic Bible lesson. God made male and he made female. And he said, for this cause, speaking of marriage, the covenant of marriage, for this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife and they twain, or the two of them, shall be one flesh. That's what marriage is all about, becoming one with each other. One flesh. Wherefore, there are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. I don't know how many young couples I've stood before and read this particular verse. What God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. So do you know what that means? And you they'll say, no. Don't you let anyone tear you apart. Don't you let mom or dad or brother or sister tear you apart. What God has joined together is joined together. Let not man put asunder or pull it apart. Amen. But let's go back to the book of Genesis real quick because that's what Jesus is talking about. In the book of Genesis. Let me find the book of Genesis. I think it's the first one. Huh? Yeah, toward the front. Verse 18 of chapter 2. Now, this is God speaking. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. We'll make him a helpmeet for him. Now, this is not good. Adam's all by himself. But that's just not a, a good thing. Let's make him a helpmeet. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And notice how much wisdom Adam used. What's that? Dog. What's that? Cat. Bird. You ever seen scientific names of, of animals today? My goodness, where did they come up with that at? 
But Adam gave him simple names, and I think he could because I could spell cat <laughs> and dog. And Adam gave names for all the cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found in help meet for him. After God created all these animals, and he brings them to Adam. Adam, what's you going to call this one? What's you going to call that one? And he begins naming these animals. And after he names all the animals, there's still no one there for Adam. He couldn't look and say, that's wife. Or that's woman. No. And God did something very special. I don't know if you've ever thought about this. Men, we were formed from the dust of the earth. Adam was formed from the dust of the earth. All the animals were formed from the dust of the earth. There's only one person that wasn't, and that was Eve. You know the story. God took a rib from Adam's side, and he made woman. She's unique. You get, ladies, you're unique. You really are. You are unique. And it saddens me that people can't even tell the difference today. They don't say male or female. It's a, a pronoun. Or an, not a noun. Yeah, a pronoun. He, she, or it. It's, it's, it's getting ridiculous. I heard, you probably heard it too. I may have said it last week. I don't know. They had a lady before Congress, and they asked him, do you believe a man can be pregnant? She said, yes. Do you believe a man can have an abortion? She said, yes. And my only question is, why didn't they come in with straight jackets and haul her out of there? They were like, well, okay. Okay. You know, like, that's not okay. That's against God's word. It's against the laws of nature. I'm amazed at how many people have fallen for this stuff today. <laughs> Just simple Bible teaching, Bible truth. Clears all this stuff up, but nobody wants to use the Bible, and that's why they've come so hard against the Word of God in the last days, like Paul said. In the last days, they will not endure sound doctrine. And I want you to know, it's sound doctrine to tell you that a man's a man and a woman's a woman. Okay? You try to flip it around. I won't go over there today. I'm not going there today. <laughs> but notice Ephesians chapter 5. Now, the, the title today is Covenant. We're speaking about the covenant, of course, of marriage. In Ephesians chapter 5, most of you know it very well, Paul gives instruction to the church at Ephesus, especially to the men at Ephesus. And he says, as husbands, love your wives. Well, how do we love them? He tells us, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. And gave himself for it. You're to love your wife like Jesus loved the church. Willing to lay your life on the line. Any man worth his salt will lay his life on the line for his wife. If someone comes up and tries to hurt Penny, I'll tell you what, I'll go down dying. There's no doubt in my mind. And that's why he said, love them. If you have to give it all. If you have to give every bit. Now, I'll share just a little bit of a story of how Penny and I met. Most of you already know, so I won't bore you with all the details. But she was in the fifth grade. I was in the seventh. I think she was 21 and I was 22. <laughs> no, she was 11 and I was 12 at that particular time, just barely. We were about a year apart. And um, used to catch the bus at Parrish Elementary School before they closed it down. That's a sore subject. I'm not going to go there either. Condemned that building. Wouldn't let us have school there anymore. Shut it down. Shipped our kids to town on buses. Reopened the school as a health clinic. They were so afraid they were going to fall down. Now, if you go by it today, it's a school again. A private school. Anyway, like I said, that's a, that's a sermon later on. <laughs> But we would meet to get on our bus. I was going to Palmetto High School. She was still in grade school. But we had to catch the bus up at Palmetto High School. My mother happened to be a, a guard, crossing guard, to let the kids. So mom would take us to the school, drop us off. We would catch the bus there while she was bringing kids across the road. Now, my mom was a beautiful woman. She had her little green gator skirt, her white blouse. With all her military stuff, she was a real crossing guard. 
she had her whistle, and buddy, she blew that whistle that you were going too fast. But as I was standing there waiting for the bus to come, every now and then I hear these semi trucks, and I'm thinking, a little kid bus almost got run over. We looked, see, but they ain't nobody in danger. They're honking at my mama. <laughs> these men are honking at my mama. And you may think it started later, but I can tell you right now, it started back then. I said, stop it, you honkies. <laughs> See, I named them a long time ago before everything else came around. But while we were waiting on the bus, back to my little story, me and my cousin, we would walk around the old school where the year before we were kings. We were sixth graders. We were somebody. All the little kids looked up to us, man, we, we ruled. We'd walk around that, and if any kid got in front of us, we'd push them out of the way. This is our space. We're sixth graders. <laughs> then we went to high school, and everything flopped around. We were back on the low totem pole, so to speak, the bottom rung of the ladder. And the seniors in high school, they would initiate you. Back then, it was 7th to 12th. It's not like that anymore, I guess. 7th to 12th. And when you got in the shower in the 7th grade, and there was these seniors with beards and everything, they take that towel and dip it in the water. Boy, they can light you up like a bullwhip. But thank God, there was one boy from Parrish. He was a senior, and he knew me. He knew me real good. We grew up together. His name's Dale Rawls, big man, six foot five probably back then, 230 pounds, 12th grade. God was fixing to light me up. He, he grabbed me. No, you don't. That's my friend right there. So God was protecting me even in the showers. <laughs> but as we were walking around the school, king of the school, we hear this little giggling. <laughs> What's that? There's this little girl following me around with my sister, my younger sister. And every time I look around, she starts giggling. <laughs> I said, that girl must have a crunch on me. Or is it crush? I think it's a crush. <laughs> and she did. In the fifth grade is when she first set her eyes on me. We dated for one day. I won't go into all the details on that. That's another story. <laughs> but we did. We went together for one day, and I broke up with her. She went home crying. But it was so understandable. My dad had just cut on a watermelon, beautiful, cold watermelon. And I had a choice to make because I was really bashful. I said, there's no way I can eat this watermelon in front of this girl. Because when I eat a watermelon, I eat a watermelon. Back then, you know, you're just digging up seeds all over your chest and sticking juicy. I said, I can't do that. I've got to make a choice here. It's either her or the watermelon. I chose the watermelon. <laughs> so it's really amazing that we ever made it 50 years. <laughs> it really is. Amen. And we got married. One of my sister-in-laws here today, Lisa, I don't think Kathleen was able to make it. She's going to mark, okay. But after Penny and I got married, she had these two little sisters that she raised basically like her own children. She babysat them. She, she practically raised them. Her mom worked all the time. So Penny stayed home and took care of her little sisters. And here I was taking her away from her little sisters. We moved away. We moved to Ruskin. And they never could figure out. I mean, they've even, I've heard them say it through the years. She said, can you believe they would come get us every other week and let us spend the weekend? What 18-year-old boy would, would share his weekend and his wife with kids? You see, what I never told you, Lisa and Kathleen, was my older brother was taken from me when I needed him. And I watched him get on the plane for Vietnam. And I spent 13 months needing my big brother, and he wasn't there. And I couldn't do anything about it. And I knew you needed your big sister. She needed you too. Amen. So at 18 years old, we'd go get him, take him to the beach, take him to our house, spend time with him, and let him begin to acclimate to Penny not being there anymore. And they grew up fine young ladies. Amen. I'm proud of both of them. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Moving on. The family is under attack today. I don't think I have to convince anybody of that. So many families are falling apart. There are organizations today that are trying to destroy the nuclear family. They say we need to do away with family. They don't, shouldn't be families anymore. There shouldn't be fathers and mothers and brothers and sisters and siblings. You know, it's, it's just ridiculous what they're doing. And, and in doing so, it's eroding our society. Family is important to our society. It's family, then God, then family. But family comes in second to God. And family is so important. So we have to be very careful. And I'm honored to be here today and to have made it 50 years. It doesn't seem possible. But really, it has gone by fast. It really has. But I wanted to do something today that's kind of out of the norm. I hope you all don't mind. This is going to be a different service. Last week was different. I didn't have many scriptures to share. The same is true today. I usually have 10 or 12, but that won't happen today once again. But I'm wondering if those of you who've been married 50 plus years, or 50 at least, anybody 50 plus, if you would come up front real quick. Just, just be bold enough to just come up here. We want to honor you today. Come on up here. Don't be, don't be bashful. It's for a reason. You've been married 50 years or more. Come line up here. I want some of the younger folks to see that people do make it. People do make it. We're going to have a little bit of a contest. I think I already know who's going to win. <laughs> but there's some real close ones, too. Now, today, today, June 12th, is Stephen Wendy's 51st anniversary. <laughs> so I'm going to ask each one how long they've been married. Wendy? Steve, how long? 51 years. 51 years. Ray, Noni, how long have you been married? 64. 64, he thinks. <laughs> Dodd Charlie. 69 years. No, 69. 69, right? 69. Uh oh, here we go. How many years, Mac? 73. 73 years. Wow. Ruth Ann? 68. Praise God. Young lady, how long many years have you been married? I've been married 50 years. Okay. <laughs> Marcia, 58. 57. 57. I'm getting ahead of myself. Al? 59. 59 years. Wow. With You're with him? <laughs> we need to pray for her. <laughs> amen, amen. Faye? 54. 54? Congratulations. And Bonnie? 56. 56. And? 59. All right, let's give them a hand. That's a big deal. Okay, you can be seated. Since you're 14, praise God. Amen. 14 and 15. That sounds like me and Penny almost. Now, usually when you have a contest, you have a winner, and there is a prize. If Mac, I don't know if Mac's going to be able to stay around. Do you have to go back to the home? You do? Okay. So Mac's not going to be able to take the prize. He wins it in our heart. So it would go to Dot and Charlie. And they're going to be first in line when we go next door to eat. Okay? So make sure Dot and Charlie are first in line. And anyone married over 50 years is it to follow Charlie and Dot. So we want all of our people to be married 50 years or more. To get to eat first. Is that too much to ask? No. Amen. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 7. Let's just go there. I do want to use some scriptures. Romans 13 and 7. Render, therefore, to all their dues. Tribute to whom tribute is due. In other words, we do pay our taxes. We render those things to the government to make our roads and things like that. Customs to whom customs. Fear to whom fear and honor to whom honor. So I wanted to honor each and every one of you. And this is not to make anyone here that's had a divorce feel bad. Please don't take it like that. 
But this is something we need to exalt, I think, more in our day to let young people know. It does happen. People do make it 73 years. Amen. That's, a, that's incredible, Mac. And let me just share this just for a moment with Mac. His wife's been in a nursing home for many years now. He took those vows serious. Till death do us part. In sickness and in health. Amen. So we're proud of you, Mac. We're proud of you, brother. Amen. Hallelujah. So we did want to honor each and every one. So this is not all about me and Penny. I wish it were. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Amen. But it was very important to us. One of the secrets, I think, to our marriage has been we can laugh with each other, but we can laugh at each other. Penny came into our family, and our family, let me just say, we kid a lot. Big kidders. Teasers. When she came into the family, they nicknamed her and poked fun at her, and she just felt, she fell right in there. One of her nicknames was Stick. Where did, how do you get a nickname like Stick? Well, her little legs were about that, like a stick. <laughs> she took it in stride. She loved the teasing and the humor. And she has a really good sense of humor. She even laughs at my jokes sometimes. <laughs> but that's, I think, is very important. Not only to be able to laugh, but to laugh at yourself. You know, we took marriage very serious, but we didn't take life too serious. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, not quite time yet, but just in a few moments, I want to show you a little video. Penny doesn't know anything about this. <laughs> but as most men, I think, probably would like to write their wife a love song. You know, I always wanted to write her a love song. And I'd never written a song before. And I was just kind of getting into the guitar a little bit. Didn't have any original music at all. So I wrote her a song. And I used the song Johnny Be Good for the, for the background. <laughs> Probably not the typical love song that you've ever heard of. And what she doesn't know also is I look back into some of her memorabilia. Well, Pepsi Penny will come out. And on that video, you're going to see her first baby bottle. Okay? I won't, break, I won't spoil it right now, but you're going to see her first baby bottle. You're going to see her onesies that she had when she was growing up. I tried to find one of her baby bottles, her second baby bottle, but I couldn't find it. It was a milk jug with a nipple on it full of Pepsi. <laughs> so as I was reading, singing or writing this song, I was trying to involve my daughters in it. And little Lisa was living with us at the time, my sister-in-law. So I even got her in that little song. And it's a love song to Penny, and it's called Pepsi Penny. Be good. Now, we're not going to do it just right now kids have got to come back over and all that stuff. I've got to give them a, a few minutes. But I didn't want to preface it just a little bit. The next song is a love song. It's Love Me Tender. I couldn't get Elvis to come. So years ago, Brother Rick and I, many, many years ago, we sang this song at a Valentine's party we had here at the church. It was just off the cuff. Thing, but we sang it together. It was on an old recording. Dug it out. And since I couldn't get Elvis, I gave her the second best thing. Amen. So, that's the second song, Love Me Tender. And on the third song, I'm not sure we can show it on the video over YouTube because of copyright. It simply says, I will be here. And that's a commitment we made to each other to be there for our children. That they could know they have a constant in life. Everything else may be falling apart around them, but mom and daddy ain't falling apart. Mom and daddy are going to be here through thick 
or sin. And they can always depend on that. I never wanted them to worry one day that mom and daddy was going to split. I never wanted that to enter into their hearts. And I hope and I pray that we have instilled that not only in our daughters, but our grandchildren also. It means the world, world to me. Because there's so many things today that aren't constant. And children need things to look up to. Are they getting the children now? Do you know if the classes are going to come over? Huh? Rick's coming? Okay. Uh, I figured there'd be a few. Carrie's here. I figured there'd be a few awkward moments until we could get up. But I think the video is queued up. As soon as the little children get here with their teachers, we will show the video. I want to thank all of you that could come today. Many called, said they couldn't come. They found out we were having pizza, and they said, nah, forget it. No, <laughs> but I do want to thank my youngest daughter, especially Carrie, for all that she had done this last week. She has really, her and Casey have worked very hard, very diligently to do this. My oldest daughter works in Orlando. She's, I don't think, able to get off, and so that's kind of a little bit of a disappointment. No, they're not handmade pizzas. <laughs> they will be from Pizza Hut. And thanks to Harley, she's a manager there now. She got us a really great deal on 37 pies. Yeah. So I hope you're hungry today. Amen. That's a lot and lots of pizza. Amen. I think they're beginning to come in now. But this first song, I sit down one day with my old guitar. And I thought, what can I do? And her nickname was Pepsi Penny. Everybody knew Penny. She loves her Pepsi. Now, I know people say they're bad for you. I think she has defied all odds. <laughs> you know, she can drink Pepsi like you wouldn't believe. Not as bad as she used to be. But in the beginning, she was Pepsi Penny. So I got my guitar, and I recorded that. And I went and got the bass guitar and recorded that. And I went and got the drums, recorded that. Then I got a microphone and sang over top of all that. Okay, so it took a while. <laughs> I'd sang it to a few people before, but it was never recorded. So I said, I need to record this for, you know, posterity. Yeah, posterity. Whatever that is. <laughs> so I finally put it to music and the tune of Johnny Be Good. I know you won't be able to hear all the words they're a little hard to distinguish. So I'll give you the first couple of lines. Deep down in little parish, down Fort Hamer Road, there lived a little girl with legs like fishing poles. <laughs> very romantic, very romantic. <laughs> now she could drink more Pepsi than any man. One time I saw her suck flat a Pepsi Cola can. Just brought her to tears. You can imagine. <laughs> Pastor Rick has been so gracious to make a video. I gave me these pictures. I said, brother, I don't know what I'm doing. Wouldn't even know where to start. I was going to call Wendy, but it was so late in the week. I, I didn't want to spring that on her. And he said, brother, we can do it. We can do it. He said, we. <laughs> and he did. He got with Bill. Brother Bill helped him out to figure out how to do some of this stuff. So I don't know exactly how it's going to turn out, but we're going to find out. I hope you enjoy Pepsi, Penny, Love Me Tender, and I will be here. Are we ready with the lights? Okay, let me get these up here. I think Pepsi, Penny's back there with my children. Okay, here we go. Now she's 
she could drink more Pepsi than any man. One time I seen her some flat of Pepsi Cola can. She never really liked Coca Cola too well. She could drink a Pepsi like a flowing well. Go, 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 Pepsi Pity, go, 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 Pepsi Pity, go, go. Carrie said, Daddy, what we gonna do? She won't drink no RC Cola or a chocolate too. You never cried out, Daddy, we're in love. Beyond her comes a Pepsi Cola truck. Go, 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 Pepsi Pity, go, go. Go, Pepsi Pity, go, go. Yeah. 
Just as sure as seasons were made for change, our lifetimes were made for each So Amen. Thank you, Pastor Rick. I didn't know exactly how it was going. I didn't get to see the whole thing. He wouldn't let me. Uh, amen. But I do thank from the bottom of my heart, thank you for taking your time to do that for Penny and I. And if I understand correct, there are some copies for my daughters, kids to have for posterity. Amen. One of the pictures that was shown was a young boy by the name of Jordan. He's going to prison next week. So please pray for Jordan. He's doing much better. He said, Granny and Granddaddy, take care of yourself. I want you to be alive when I get out. So we got, I got more reason not to eat the ho-hos anymore. <laughs> Amen. Thank you all for, for being here and sharing in this video. I know most of you don't know us, or some of you, and uh, fifty years. 
Now, are we ready next door? Is it time to let the festivities begin? There's pizza and, and other things. If you don't like pizza, there are things. And uh, everybody, you're play even if you didn't sign up, you didn't come today, didn't know what was going on, please come. Some of you have to leave. I understand that. But if you can, please come and uh, share this time with us as we celebrate uh, 50 years of marriage together. Would you, be, would you stand so we can be dismissed? Now, Al and Edna, their son, is in the hospital. And as you're leaving, I'm going to be praying for him, okay? He's in the emergency room or South Bay right now as we speak. So let's pray and be dismissed. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the opportunity. Not many people get to do what I just did in front of so many people. So I thank you for that, Father. I thank you for all that helped out and participated. That's a special blessing in their life. And as we go next door and begin this fellowship, Lord, we want to bless the food, everything that people have prepared, that we can enjoy these things together as a family and also the family of God and friends and family. Bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. remember, Dot and Charlie go first in the 50s. Al, come on up. You're dismissed. I'm going to pray for some folks here.